The British HMS Ark Royal Carrier earned a reputation as an unsinkable ship during the early days of World War II. Despite being explicitly targeted for destruction by the Kriegsmarine and claimed sunk several times, it always came back to haunt her pursuers. But every giant is bound to meet its match eventually. For HMS Ark Royal, that was a young U-boat commander named Friedrich Guggenberger. On the fateful evening of November 13, 1941, the cunning U-boat commander spotted Task Force H off the Spanish coast and scoured the numerous Allied ships looking for the most prestigious target, Ark Royal. A single torpedo strike between the fuel bunkers and bomb store and directly below the bridge island tore a colossal hole in the British carrier, shaking it to her core. As the vessel began to sink, the crew kept fighting for the next several hours to try and save her. Soon, Ark Royal rolled 90 degrees and finally went down. The man responsible for sinking the prized unsinkable carrier became a national hero in Germany, and his many exploits cemented his reputation as one of the most lethal U-boat aces in the war. In response, the Allies would hunt him down to the farthest corners of the world. A Rising Star Friedrich Guggenberger was an experienced U-boat commander, known for his aggressive tactics and disregard for military decorum. Before the United States joined World War II, the young man had already taken over a dozen Allied ships to the bottom of the sea, to the frustration of many competing captains who scolded him for his long hair and unorthodox approach to command. Nevertheless, after his role in sinking HMS Ark Royal, Guggenberger became a superstar overnight. He was paraded across Germany, interviewed by Adolf Hitler himself, and featured as the exemplary German sailor who would help pave the way for the Thousand-Year Reich. As such, the Nazi leader awarded him the Knight's Cross with oak leaves, the highest decoration a German serviceman could earn. After months of traveling as a war hero, Guggenberger was eager to return to the battlefront and prove that his actions against Ark Royal had not been a fluke. He was then appointed a modern Class 9C U-boat and an inexperienced crew that he was instructed to hone into becoming the best in the Kriegsmarine. This powerful new vessel could operate far from shore for much longer than the conventional Class 7 submarines. For their new mission, Guggenberger and his crew were bound for a new region of the world, where they would have to face their most powerful adversary yet. A New Front After the sudden Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, Hitler opened a new naval front in the war. The introduction of the United States into World War II was a momentous event. The German wolf pack that had wreaked havoc in the Atlantic now faced America's industrial and military might. As such, they would need the most illustrious and lethal sailors to succeed against the novel foe. Guggenberger and his men left France without knowing their destination. It wasn't until they were already cruising underwater that they opened the envelope with their orders. They were headed for Brazil. The waters there were the perfect hunting ground for an experienced commander training a new crew, as they stood in the path of hundreds of merchant ships carrying vital strategic resources to the Allies in North America and Europe. The long trip to South America was completely uneventful, the German crew members were subjected to continuous excruciating drills that aimed to transform them into a capable team worthy of Guggenberger's experience and renown. Usually, the sailors didn't know whether they were really being attacked or it was another brutal drill. Even so, Guggenberger pushed to submerge in increasingly less time as diving rates were one of his submarine's most prominent disadvantages. By the time they reached their destination, crew had transformed from a group of inexperienced newcomers into a confident and effective war machine that finally was up to the standards their commander demanded of them. Rampage In June of 1943, after two months at sea, Guggenberger and his men spotted their first target, the Swedish freighter Venezia. The crew was eager to put its training to the test, and the men immediately concocted a plan of attack. The ship was unescorted, 
allowing Guggenberger to get reasonably close before firing a torpedo. As the sound of the detonation was finally heard, it sent every man aboard U-513 into a wild euphoria. However, the celebration was short-lived, as the Allies had a well-established anti-submarine network that was immediately put into motion. The weather quickly devolved into a tropical storm, but the American submarine hunters had become proficient at taking out German U-boats, even amid a terrible thunderstorm. The Germans had to dive as quickly and as deeply as possible, and they rushed and yelled frantically as knobs were turned and valves released. The massive ship began to sink into the ocean, just as Allied patrols spotted the smoke from the sinking Venezia. Complete silence followed. Everyone aboard U-513 had to remain perfectly quiet if they wanted to stay undetected. But the American vessels were not easily fooled, and soon identified where the attack came from. Within minutes, they began dropping depth charges in an unrelenting barrage of underwater destruction. Guggenberger didn't have many options. If they tried to escape, they would give away their position. So they waited patiently, praying none of the explosives would land a lethal hit. After what seemed like an eternity, the hunters withdrew, and U-513 survived to fight another day. A couple of weeks later, U-513 terrorized the Brazilian coast, hunting down Allied vessels and escaping every attempt at retaliation. Guggenberger managed to deliver lethal blows to five Allied ships, including two American ones. The feat made him the most destructive U-boat commander at that point in the war. It also made him a prime target for the Allies. A mistake. In mid-July, Guggenberger ordered his radio officer to send a message home. The deed was highly unconventional, as the radio signal could easily be used by enemy forces to pinpoint the approximate location of the German submarine. The action was so unorthodox that many still question the rationale behind the decision. Some historians even suggest Guggenberger sent the radio message knowing it would attract enemy attention, as he was eager to sink additional ships. Regardless, the radio signal attracted a much more dangerous foe than any Allied ship, and soon, an American PBM Mariner flying boat was on the Germans' trail. At the time, if one of those formidable U-boat hunters caught a submarine on the surface, it was game over. The Mariner spotted Guggenberger's vessel on July 19th as she surfaced, unaware of enemy presence. The American aircraft was heavily armed with machine guns and a sizable supply of depth charges. As the warbird began to descend upon its target, the men aboard U-513 sounded the alarm and manned their battle stations. Guggenberger knew it was too late to attempt to dive, and their only option now was to fight and hope for the best. The submarine was not ideally armed to counter an aircraft attack, and things turned from bad to worse when her main duck gun jammed, just as the American flying boat swooped in to finish her off. The Mariner dropped several depth charges all around the surfaced submarine, each explosive sending a violent shockwave through her metal structure. Suddenly, one of the explosives hit the boat from below and ruptured her outer hull. The water began pouring into the ship at dramatic rates, and the men rushed to the escape hatches. However, the U-boat was quickly plummeting to the depths. Only seven sailors survived. Friedrich Guggenberger was one of them. Master of Escape Guggenberger and the other survivors remained aboard an inflatable raft for over a day, but the U-boat skipper was severely wounded and had trouble controlling the bleeding. They were then rescued by an American warship, and the U-boat commander was taken to a local hospital for emergency surgery. After the operation, the now prisoner of war was transferred to Fort Hunt, and then to a camp at Crossville. In late January of 1944, Guggenberger was moved to the Papago Park Camp near Phoenix, Arizona, a base known to be inescapable due to its remote position in the middle of the desert and the rugged granite soil it was built on. However, less than a month into his incarceration, Guggenberger teamed with four U-boat captains and executed a daring escape, making it all the way to Tucson before being recaptured. Guggenberger would try to flee again as part of the Great Papago Escape, 
the most incredible POW escape on American soil during World War II, also labeled by the press as the greatest manhunt in Arizona history. Even so, Guggenberger was recaptured two weeks later at a mere 10 miles from the border of neutral Mexico. He was then sent to a POW camp in New York, where he would spend the rest of the war before being sent back to Germany. Disappearance Guggenberger was not willing to retire from military duty after World War II was over. Instead, he enlisted in the newly established Bundesmarine in 1956 and quickly rose through the ranks to become Deputy Chief of Staff in the NATO Command Afnorth. The legendary commander would continue to serve Germany and NATO until his retirement. In May of 1988, after suffering from the onset symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, he left his home for a stroll in the woods and never returned. His body was found two years later, leaving behind an impressive legacy after being credited with sinking 17 ships and damaging another 6,000 gross register tonnage. Thank you for watching Dark Seas. If you want to learn more about the incredible story of the Great Papago Escape, check out our Dark Docs video on it. Or click on your screen to check out another of our Dark Documentaries channels, where we publish new content regularly. Stay tuned.